One of the things to realize is that if missionaries have been away for four years, there is an eight year gap between them and their fellowship. Because the church has been going one way for four years, right. they've been doing something else That's for helpful. four years. Yeah. There's actually yeah. an eight year gap of experience, you know. Um, one of the things, you know, we would get letters from friends, you know, when we were younger and they'd had children. And you would know intellectually they'd had children. You would get back and all of a sudden, you know, why have you got a baby? <laughs> it, you know, feeling it and seeing yeah, it is yeah, just different yeah, and yeah. allowing people that time to deal with that. Hello, welcome to Independence, the FIEZ podcast. This is a special bonus episode. I'm here with Eddie Arthur, who's had a kind of almost a lifetime, not quite, of being involved in mission. And we're thinking about the very specific question about how does a church care for its missionaries? So, um, Eddie, I just want to kind of ask you about before you send a missionary or as you're sending a missionary, talk about when missionaries are out in the field, when they come back. That seems to be three nice little categories. How, yep. can, a, how can a church care well for its missionaries? Okay. Um, so before they go. Before they go, I think the thing to to ensure is that they have the training and the background that they need. Right. Um, just imagine somebody is going out to, say, Ethiopia to be involved in church planting. They're going to do everything a church planter does in the UK, and they're going to do it through Amharic, another language, in a different culture where they're going to make mistakes. Yeah. So what preparation would a church planter in the UK need? They're going to need that. And then they're going to need the language skills and everything else. So so just because they're going to Ethiopia um, doesn't make their need for theological training, for example, any different? No, in fact, I'd say it makes it yes. you know, yeah. more because, you know, um, how much preparation do you do on the history of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church? Right. Training to be a pastor in the right. UK. Yeah. Going to Ethiopia, you need that. Okay. So make sure they've got the background that they need to do the work that they're going to be doing, whatever that work is, and be prepared to invest in them the time that they need. So don't push them out the door too quickly. You know, it. it's... Um, Really tempting both for churches and for missionaries. You know, we, we're activists. We like to get going. Yeah. And we like to save money. We like to save money. Look, you're going to send somebody for a number of years to Ethiopia. It's worth a few extra months to do the time to make sure they're doing, yep. they're, they know what they're doing. Okay. When they're out there, make sure that initially they don't feel under pressure. Again, if they're going to Ethiopia, learning Hamharic is going to take them a couple of years before they can function yep. Yep. adequately. Don't expect, you know, don't expect them to be writing back and telling you about all the con the converts they've made in the first two years. So churches can create some of that pressure, can't they? In they can. Of, in terms of unrealistic expectations. Yeah. yeah. And um, and the missionaries will place that on themselves anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. they're trying to justify why they're receiving their, their support. Um, so take that pressure off. But I think the big thing that we can do today is be in, be in wise communication. Uh, get them into your church Zoom meeting, uh, prayer meetings. But if they start turning up at your services every Sunday, you want to ask them, why aren't you at an Ethiopian church? Okay. You know, so encourage them from home, encourage them to be involved at an appropriate level, but think through seriously how much do you want them to be there? You know, if they were, if they were planting a church in the next village and yet they turned up at every service at their home church you'd wonder how you'd the church it would yeah. be a bit odd wouldn't it yeah and so yeah. if you know if they're turning up on zoom all of the time yeah or they're endlessly posting on facebook just you know or writing blogs or, or writing blogs, <laughs> yes. blogs. What, what are some of the diagnostic questions we could ask our missionaries out in the field just to get to the bottom of how they're genuinely doing rather than just saying eddie how are you doing are, are there particular things that we could hone in on that would be useful i i think asking things like you know who are your friends? Right. Who are you spending time with? Um, how are you being encouraged by Ethiopian Christians? I think one of the the hardest things that you have to learn as a missionary, but you do have to learn it, is to be encouraged by the believers you're working with. Yeah, yeah. Because being encouragement across cultures is quite difficult. Mm. But just asking questions about relationships, about friendships, not so much what are you doing, but you know, tell me about the, the church fellowship. What do they do? What do, you, what, do you, what do you find interesting about what they're doing? What do you find difficult? But so asking 
about things around rather than, you know, what is it you're doing? Why are you spending so much time on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Um, or, you know, I saw you made this Ethiopian friend on Facebook. Tell me about okay. them. Um, yeah. That sort of that so, sort so thing. a good pastoral practice, in fact, that you, yeah, yes. you, you should be um, exercising with any member of the congregation. Yeah. They, in essence. You know, it, they are a member of your congregation in the end. Yeah. yeah. They're just... What about bringing them home? How often you sh should you do that? No, I'm not thinking, talking, thinking, here, thinking here about finishing, but actually as part of your care furlough, I guess it used to be called. Yeah, should you be, should you be building that into your, your planning for caring for missionaries in the field? Yes, I think so. I think um, the, the traditional four-year term was built around, um, you know, travel. And I think it, that works pretty well. Right. Though I think um, a sort of a, a summer holiday at home in the middle can work quite well. Yeah. And most um, places are easier to get to than they used to be. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. You, you, you're not on a boat for six months. No. No. Um, but I, I think if you're looking at long-term involvement, people need to be there long-term. But, um, you know, it, it's going to some extent depend on conditions. Um, I had friends who worked in a, um, a, a very uh, hot, unpleasant um, environment in uh, Africa who came home for a couple couple of months during hot season because they couldn't do anything anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that made and, sense. And it, it made sense. Yeah. Um, it, it, but I think generally people should, you know, if, if it's a long-term commitment, they should okay. spend long enough away. The other thing is um, how often do children need to be home okay. to stay adjusted to their home country? So I was going to ask you, actually, a slightly more specific question about kids, of yeah. missionaries, how, how about caring for them? You, you're beginning to talk about that, so, so say a little bit more about that. Um, don't ask, don't ever say, my, how much you've grown. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is to adults, is it? <laughs> <they've been laughs> yeah, well, there is that, yes. Um, what's the difference between a missionary on furlough and an elephant? About three, three stone. Yeah. Um, I did hear sort of some American missionary kids who got t-shirts saying, my, how I've grown. <laughs> because every church they went to, people said that. I, I think, Think about what is needed to help them keep one foot in their home culture. You know, right. when we when we came back to the UK, our kids were moving to a foreign country. Mm. Um, you know, they they'd grown up in Ivory Coast in an expat environment, but they were they were Ivorians in some ways, or, or French or something. They weren't English. Um, so just doing enough that when a transition home is necessary they have things to key into. Um, one of the big things, I think, is if people come home for a holiday, let them have a holiday. Yeah. Um, Don't expect them to be working every day and yeah. visiting all the churches and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you yeah. know, if, if you come home for six weeks and you have to spend four weeks of that driving up and down the motorway with a PowerPoint, it, you may as well stay yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. on the field. Um, you know, people come back in order to spend time with their families, in order to reestablish relationships, Allow them to do that. Um, and then when they come back, just take time and help them to make the transition. And what about when they come back permanently? We're beginning to sort of speak about that. Um, I mean, if they've been away for a long time, that can be a massive thing. Can't yeah. It? One of the things to realise is that if missionaries have been away for four years, there is an eight-year gap between them and their fellowship. Because the church has been going one way for four years. Right. They've been doing something else That's for helpful. four years. Yeah. There's actually yeah. an eight-year gap of experience. You know, um, one of the things, you know, we would get letters from friends, you know, when we were younger and they'd had children. And you would know intellectually they'd had children. You would get back and all of a sudden, you know, why have you got a baby? <laughs> it, you know, feeling it and seeing yeah. it is yeah. just different. Yeah. And yeah. allowing people that time to deal with that. Um, and then... When they come back, helping them think through what they're going to do next. Um, not everyone can find a role within their agency. Um, so, you know, talk to them seriously about what the next step should be for them and what you're prepared to support. You know, um, be honest about that. If as a church you've been committed to s supporting church planting in Burkina Faso, for example, and then the church planters come home, well, they're no longer church planting in Burkina Faso. So honestly, you know, is your, is your commitment to them or is it to the ministry? Yeah, yeah. And you have to think that through very carefully. 
And according to what you think, you then have to make a decision. And presumably people come to an end of their mission work for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. In some cases, it might be health or disappointment or failure. And you, you've got to pass to people through that in the same way that you would pass to anybody else in yeah. church. Yeah, and, you know, and, and for many others, it's just, you know, a natural part of the life yeah. cycle. You know, um, most pastors move from church to church and missionaries move from ministry to ministry. And, you know, some pastors move out of pastoral ministry into secular work and, you know, missionaries will do the same. It's just when you've been living outside of the UK, that is more difficult because you don't have all the connections. Yeah. So help them build those connections. So in, it, it, it's it's basically, um, I was going to say discipleship on speed. I don't think that sounds quite right now. I've said it. But the, the, the idea that, you know, of, of knowing the sheep and the sheep knowing you, that's the sort of kind of heart of shepherding, yeah. isn't it? And actually, it's no different for a missionary you've sent out. But as we've talked about in previous episodes, having that church to missionary relationship yeah. rather than mediated mm-hmm. via agencies at two or three removes that's going to be the, yeah. the best the best way to do it isn't it the issues are the same for any church member yeah but there are complexities that sure. are caused by the situation of being a missionary that you have to deal with great eddie thank you has been a real help and i hope if you've sent missionaries out that's just a help to you in general to think about how you care for your missionaries well thank you for joining us for this bonus episode of independence 